Not long ago, we brought you voices from the flood about the catastrophic flood of 2019 in the Mississippi Delta. That same year, other areas of the country were flooded as well, and now they continue their efforts to make a comeback. John Torpy has more. The floods of 2019 had a wide footprint across the Midwest and caused over $12 billion in damages between March 14th and March 31st. For Hamburg, the town spent a million dollars on the first day of the flood, money the town didn't have. Now we were broke. We had, we, we had, we had to, we needed money. And um, that's what we started doing very day of the flood. After we gathered our stuff up in City Hall and moved to the um, elementary school, I started, I started raising money, private funds, because I knew we were going to need probably $20 million to rebuild because of 18 foot of water. So far, we've done um, $18.6 million, and uh, I've got another 20 to 25 that I'm asking for. The recovery process was slow going for Hamburg and surrounding communities. Floodwaters refused to leave farm fields. Two more flood events occurred through the spring and summer of that year. Some farmers reported having standing water in their fields as late as September. The 2019 crop for many in the area was non-existent. But I have to tell you, we first had to get over our tears because for us, it's still emotional. For us, we lost so much. And, um, you know, people were losing their homes and their businesses, but we were losing our town. And um, we had to get over that and suck it up the best we could during the day. We could cry early in the morning, we could cry at night, but suck it up and use it and do everything we can to help rebuild the town. 2019 floodwaters took a lot from Hamburg. 73 homes were ruined. Only six of the city's 44 businesses were able to open the day of the flood. Located next to Interstate 29, as well as being situated along a major railroad line, Hamburg has become an attractive town for agricultural businesses like Manildra Milling Corporation, Bartlett Grain Company, and AgriVision Equipment Group. It's tough to recover from, from something like this, not only as a business... Tim Maher is manager for AgriVision Equipment Group in Hamburg and says when the floodwaters destroyed most of the downtown businesses and inundated nearby farm fields, many of the area farmers found themselves in a different role. Some of them were able to take some of their equipment and actually help with some of the rebuild out on the levee. So they were able to, to go back out and put some of their equipment to work and, and get a little bit of income off of that. We had to change our business because we went from supporting farmers to supporting more of a construction-based business at that time. And a lot of our same customers, but, but they, they switched from being more farming ec economics to, to more of a construction-based business. And it, it really changed the way that we did business on a day-to-day. When the floodwaters finally receded, the people of Hamburg began to rebuild. With help from numerous state, local, and federal agencies, the town began to take on its former shape. But navigating the recovery process brought its own set of challenges. Economic development, homeland security, the governor's office, without them, we would not be where we are now because we're just so little with, with no staff and to have staff that knows what to do in a disaster, we've got that. But to have staff that knows what to do after it, hey, I didn't even know what to do after it. I mean, you have to figure it out. That's what you have to do because every disaster is different. The first step for rebuilding from the 2019 flood events was to stop the water from doing any more damage to the levees. The Army Corps of Engineers began work along the banks of the Missouri River with help from area residents. When you are a local landowner on any of the boards, you know, you have a little bit of skin in the game, which means it's not just uh, I'm just an elected official that represents not only myself, but I, I represent all my neighbors here too. And with that... Um, John Eskew is a farmer in Thurman, Iowa. He is also a trustee on the boards of the Pleasant Valley Levee District 
and a trustee for the Missouri Valley Drainage District. Both districts cover 34,000 acres from Thurman to Hamburg. When, when we, we had the catastrophic, catastrophic event, we, we see the, the levees fall. I mean, our, our job before that was mostly just watching, maintaining, communicating with our local officials and communicating with the uh, Army Corps of Engineers of how things are holding up. After that, it is, it is just a, it's like getting a fire hose in the face. It's just, boom, what do we do now? A strong working relationship between the local levy sponsors, trustees, and the Army Corps of Engineers was key to getting work started on levy repair. So without the levy boards, the local levy districts, maintaining these to the core standards, the federal dollars can't come in and fix this. The sponsors have to give us all the materials to fix the levy. We provide the labor. They just have to say, OK, here's the borrow source. Go here, get it. And it's on them to work that deal out. The minute from there, I grab it, bring it down here, and do what I need to do. The Army Corps of Engineers needed thousands of yards of material to rebuild the levees. During the flood, the Missouri River deposited tons of sand on farm fields in the area. As a levy sponsor, Askew found a way to help the Army Corps of Engineers and his neighbors at the same time. Through John's help, getting easements, we got into farm fields, scraped the sand off, built our core, and then we had to go find clay to cap it with. That was also John found us the clay. And so then we capped it with clay, put our rock on, and we're good. So it actually ends up being a win-win for the farmers. One, they got their fields cleaned up of all the sand. And two, I put it in the levee, so it helped me. No easy comeback from 18 feet of water, that's for sure.